Hi and welcome to Motor Coaching New B2 Pro. And the purpose of our program is to help you, the new motor coach owner operator or somebody that has had one for years, to give you some helpful ideas, remove the anxiety. I know from experience from going out and looking and purchasing a motor coach, going through that process of dealing with the salespeople, looking at multiple units, figuring out how you're going to pay for it and financing it, that creates tons of stress. And then once you sign the bottom line on the paperwork and now you have it sitting in your driveway, the next thing to do is what do I do next? And that's what we're here to help you do, is determine what to do next. What you need, what you don't need, how to have fun with it, and how to get out and see the world. But the very first step is, what do you need to equip your motor coach? And then what we're going to do is a two-part video on this. The first part is we're going to go outside and go through all of our compartments. I call all the compartments below the main floor the basement. And that's where we store all of our items is in the basement that we don't need on a regular basis. So what we'll do is to say we'll go look through each basement compartment and we'll talk about the items that are in there and uh, say whether it's a luxury item or an item that you really do need. Um, Jen and I have been motor coaching for about two and a half years now. We're full timers. This is our home. This is where we live and this is where we work. We are also camp workers and camp working we go to a resort and at that resort we offer our services in the office or maintenance or whatever they need and from there that's how we derive our income. My wife also sells Mary Kay products and she does that from the motor coach too. So we have an in-home business out of the motor coach and plus we both do camp working and they're both great and fun things to do. So what we'll do is we'll start, first start walking around the motor coach and we'll go through the basement compartments and as I come up to different parts of it, I'll explain to you why I have it, what I do with it, and whether it's a luxury or an item that you actually need to have. So let's get started with the tour. We're gonna go up front here first. And if you walk by, you're gonna notice on the front of the bus that there are tabs and snaps. The tabs and snaps are for a what we call a bra. And what the bra does is it protects the front end from, from stone chips as you're driving. And to me, that is not a luxury. That is something that you should do to protect your investment. After, for, you've spent tons of money on this thing, you might as well protect it. But I don't keep the bra on while we're parked. And the reason for that is, is moisture gets behind it and that ruins the paint finish. So when you're driving, you put the bra on, when you stop, you take it off. If you're parked for more than a day, I pull it off and I do not keep it on because that just protects the, the finish in the surface. This finish here is over 10 years old and if you look at it, it looks like it's brand new and that's what the bra does. It helps protect it. So let's walk around to the other side. We'll go into our first compartment and we'll take a look at what we've got. Okay, in our first basement compartment, what I have in here is some safety equipment up top. I have cones and a triangle kit necessity. If you break down out in the road, which we'll talk about in another series, you need to have a way to have people see you so you do not get hurt or get hit. So up top I have my safety equipment. I also keep extension cords and some electrical parts. I love to fix things myself and it's kind of a hobby so I'll keep things like electrical connections and so forth up in here, a whole kit for what I may need. Is that a luxury or is that a necessity? To me it's a necessity. To you, if you're not mechanically inclined, it would be a luxury. The necessities in here are the step ladder. Every motor coach, you need to have a step ladder. You never know what's going to happen with your canopies or on the roof if you have to get up. We have a ladder in the back, but this just makes it a little bit easier. Or if you're washing the rig or doing washing your windows, or you have something to repair on the sides. If you don't have a step ladder, you can't do it. So you need to get a step ladder. And this bins all my septic connections. You need a basic septic kit. And we'll talk about that in another series when we get into the systems of what a motor coach has and how you use it. This is where I store the bra for the front. It's a Here's a, a canopy, of, it's a pop-up tent that you can use um, as an auxiliary place to be in the shade if you need. To me, that's a luxury, it's not a necessity. The bra for the front is a necessity. The septic is obviously a necessity. And the 
with this, the important thing is having a container to put everything in so it's all together in one spot. So when you grab it and go, you have everything. You don't have to search for it. So that's a necessity. Behind us are beach chairs. If we're going somewhere, you want to sit on the beach? Well, yeah, that's a necessity. Um, next to the beach chair, I have a muffler kit for the generator that's up front that extends the muffler up to the roof. I have not used it yet, so it's nice to have. Do you have to have it? Only if somebody makes you use it. If you're parked right next to somebody and they're complaining about the generator if you have to run it. But to be honest with you, I never used it, so I would call that more or less a luxury. We store tissues here for inside, just because it's an easy space. Necessity, you gotta have tissues. All right, so that's it for the first compartment. We're gonna go now to the next compartment over, or the basement. In this basement compartment is where I keep most of my tools. And once again, as I said before, I like to repair things. So some of my tools you don't necessarily have to have, but I carry a cordless drill. I think that's a necessity. Something's gonna break inside, or you have to drill a hole for some reason. They're not expensive, get a cordless drill. Basic tools, wrenches, pliers, screwdrivers, you gotta have. So that's a necessity. Um, a nice place to get it and access it, it's good to have. The box next to it, I keep a complete set of socket wrenches and open end wrenches and miscellaneous tools. To me, that's a necessity. If you have a breakdown or you have to fix something, you have to have the tools to do it. So just buy a basic toolkit that's got those and you'll be good. One of the things that you may not think about that is a necessity is a simple voltmeter. So you can check things inside if you have an electrical problem or you have to check something out if it's working or not. So get yourself a basic simple voltmeter for $10, $15 and that'll uh, suffice for what you need. But I use it a lot, so that is a necessity. It's a tool you wouldn't necessarily think about. The other things in here that I keep are a gas can that's empty without gas in it, and a backup generator in case I need it for some odd reason. Those are luxuries. You don't necessarily have to have that, but I do carry them with me. And I keep a brush for washing the rig and a squeegee for cleaning the windows, both on poles. To me, for maintaining the outside, those are necessities if you don't choose to pay somebody lots of money to come keep your rig clean. I like to wash mine and wax my own. So in this compartment, basically, as I said, it's my work tools and the equipment that I use to maintain or repair something with the RV. So we'll go down to the next compartment now. next two deal with the water and septic. There are items in here that are necessities. Um, water hoses, for example. You need the special kind of water hose to connect your RV to the hydrant that doesn't transfer flavor or lead. White ones are um, excellent rated for that. There's a purple color that's rated for that. The standard home garden hose is not rated for that, so you do not want to use those. You want to use a hose that is specially designed for um, water not to transfer the flavor or lead. The other thing that we have here, which we'll talk about later on in future programs, is I use a water filter system and a regulator. I believe, in my opinion, the water regulator is a necessity. It governs the pressure of water that goes into your RV or into the motor coach. It, too much water pressure is not good for your system and not enough doesn't allow certain things like your toilet or washing machine to function correctly. And that's where I had the problem. We weren't getting enough water pressure using a simple inline system that didn't have the gauge on it, and it um, kept clogging on us inside. And the reason why the toilet was clogging was because I wasn't getting enough water to flush things down. So we installed this and I haven't had a problem since. So to me, the water regulator is a necessity. And it's set, they come factory set at 45 pounds. Mine's running right around 40 at this point. And the water filter is used for flavor. It takes the nasty flavors out of the water and keeps it clean. We don't um, drink the water per se inside. I use it for the ice machine and the freezer. 
and brushing our teeth, but we do use bottled water for consumption at meal times or as a snack or if you're thirsty. But the water you can drink and does taste okay. The other thing on this compartment is you have your septic and behind the septic there's a heater that we use for winter time. If you do winter time camping, which is another program we'll talk about, you need to have the heater. Our septic has two systems to it, which we'll talk, discuss also in a later video. It has an emaciator that chops everything and it pumps it out in a smaller hose, or you could hook it up to a regular hose and drain it that way. So that sewer kit that I showed you in the first compartment, that's where I keep this hose and the fittings for when I'm connected this way. If I'm um, a different kind of location, I'll use the emaciator pump and it's a small hose and a simple system. So in here, what you need to have as far as necessity is the hose, I carry a backup hose, and the water pressure is a necessity. The filter is a luxury. We tow our car when we're going out with the 40-foot motor coach, and we use a car dolly because of the way our car is set up. Uh, it's not designed to be a pull behind, so I have to put the uh, front wheels on the tow dolly to tow it. And also back here, I carry a ladder rack for my hose, which is an auxiliary hose for if you're at the beach, you want to hose your feet off, then it works out really well. And the second half of the ladder, which isn't on here normally, unless I'm sitting in a campground. To us, the car dolly is a necessity because we like to take a vehicle with us. So I would suggest either finding a way to tow your car or um, directly or using a tow dolly. My back compartment is what I call the garage. Those are my basement, so that's all the storage items that we just went through on one side. So the garage holds the items that I would normally keep in my garage at home. And so in here is the garage items. And what I keep in here starting at the bottom is your um, spare antifreeze, spare oil. I keep on a kill them, which is kills bacteria in your diesel fuel. We had a problem with um, algae growing in the diesel, so now I constantly treat it with this product, and every fill up, I put a little, uh, it takes an ounce and a half into the tank, and it prevents your algae from, from growing, which prevents the um, fuel filters from getting clogged. I keep my car wash in here, which we'll talk about at another time too. A spray cleaner for cleaning up the bird poop on the side of your RV, which I'm very uh, particular about. I keep some um, pesticide here for ants and bugs. And then inside the bin here are the other chemicals like Armor All or wax, um, spray grease, things that I've accumulated over the time that we use on the RV. They will come to you as you need them and you need to purchase them as you're washing and so forth. And here the necessities that I view are the treatments for the diesel, because we're diesel engine, and the cleaning supplies for washing the outside and waxing the outside of your motor coach. Remember, your motor coach is an investment and because it's an investment, you want to protect it and you want to keep it nice. There's no reason why a new motor coach um, cannot be maintained over a period of 10, 20 years and still look like a new motor coach if you take the time to take care of it. This motor coach is a uh, 2002 and by looking at it you would think it was probably uh, two or three years old on the outside. Also in here I keep filters um, for the engine. To me that's a necessity and filters for the generator system. Um, we carry uh, normally an oil filter which I've recently installed I have to replace and the fuel filters like there should be two there's a water separator which is this one and then I have a uh, regular um, fuel filter which is secondary to this one and I haven't replaced it yet but I need to from our last trip that we went on. I also keep booster cables in here in case for some reason you have to get jumped that's a necessity so I would um, put booster cables in as an added feature so that you have them. The reason why there's a can back here is it has diesel fuel in it and that's for when you change your filters you need to fill them first with diesel fuel and then install them so there's no air in the filter. So that's how I fill them at that point. 
So in the bait in the garage is the items that I keep that are for the mechanics of the engine and maintaining the outside as what you would keep in your own garage at home. I have two more compartments for the basement that we'll go over. In this compartment, I keep a bucket. It's a necessity for washing and cleaning. A paper shredder, which is a luxury. You don't necessarily have to have that. A toolbox that's filled with miscellaneous nuts and bolts, screws, and electrical connections. To me, that's a necessity. If something breaks and I need to fix it, this is my hardware store. If I'm camping out in the middle of nowhere boondocking it and I, something breaks, you need to have the part. Well, over time, I've accumulated different kinds of parts in this toolbox. And that's what I keep there. I also have some more ins uh, insecticide for ants. Ants um, sometimes are a problem in the campgrounds you go to, especially here in Texas and Florida. A cooler, and in the back there's another cooler. So, I, and then behind the cooler is a tub that I use for draining my oil into when I change the oil. It holds 26 quarts of oil, and my engine here holds 22 quarts. So I can seal it and then take it to a oil recycling place and dump it. It's, I believe in doing my own simple maintenance that I can accomplish. And so I do my own oil changes and I do my own fuel filter changes. In the next compartment up front, What we keep in here is backup furniture that comes with the uh, motor coach. And so if we have extra guests, we can bring out the chairs and put them upstairs and around the dining area. We also have a spare tire for the dolly. That's a necessity. We had a problem once and we learned the hard way. You need to have a spare. And a, a, a cold weather hose. If you do cold weather camping, you need to have a hose that's heated so that your water lines don't freeze. And this connects from the hydrant that you put your water line onto to your motor coach. So it's exposed to the surface air outside. So if it's below 32 degrees, it'll keep it um, from freezing on you. Other than that, it's just the basic storage compartment. And I have some charcoal. If you use a barbecue grill and another little toolbox. But all in all, this is just for personal storage areas. I also keep in here. A pole which doesn't want to come out here we go and this is very important to us here if I don't if I lose this pole then I'm kind of up the river without a paddle this is the pole that you use to lower and raise your canopies so if you see something like this in your motor coach don't throw it out and figure you don't need it you do need it and it's the tool you use to grab the loops on your canopies and pull them out or to retract them we have one big one that's motorized, but the smaller ones are not motorized. So this is a very important tool and you don't want to discard it. The other place I store some items in is underneath our front step. While I'm here, I also want to talk about the tire covers. We cover our tires when we're in a hot weather area. And what that does is it prevents the sun from drying out the rubber on the outside of your tire. It keeps it from cracking. So I think they're very important. And uh, I would label them as a necessity, not a luxury. Some people think it's a luxury because it looks cool when you put them on. We put them on for a very practical reason, and that is to keep the sun off the tires. Tires are very expensive, and you want to get the most life out of them that you can. We've also used a, a plastic step to get in and out. We do have a, a, a hydraulic motorized step that does move. It's one step instead of two. And it's nice to have two steps when you're carrying groceries in or out or something in and out. It's just easier. So we purchased this, at, it's actually for a horse, the, the mount a horse. So we've, uh, we purchased that at a um, agricultural store and we use it to get in and out of the motor coach. It just makes life a lot easier and simpler. So that's it's kind of a luxury but it's a necessity also because it's a safety issue and it makes it easier to get in and out in my steps here we have storage rags is where i keep my towels and stuff for uh, maintenance and washing they're very important you want to keep your hands clean you want to keep your equipment clean so you have to have a clean towels and rags so just get a stash of them and put them where it's easiest for you to get to so that's a tour of the outside of our unit 
our motor coach. It's a, a 40 foot diesel pusher and we've uh, it's a Monaco it's the diplomat model and we thoroughly enjoy it. it's an older unit yes it's it meets all of our needs and it's maintenance wise is simple to do on through the outside of our motor coach and showing you what we have and what we feel is important and what's not important you should get a good idea what you need to get there'll be some um, future programs that we're going to discuss more particular like the septic and the water and the electric systems the very next um, video that we're going to produce is going to be going through the inside of the motor coach and discussing what you need there as far as what's good for in your kitchen how do you store things inside so they don't get broken what do you really need um, do you need to have a nice GPS or can you just use your phone do you need to have certain cleaning chemicals to take care of certain things in your motor coach whether it's lime removal or how's the easiest way to clean your shower how do you store your winter clothes and your summer clothes we'll discuss that and show you what we do and what works and what we've learned over time to make it simpler for you just remember our goal is to reduce the anxiety of you going out on the road and to teach you and to show you the mistakes that we've learned and how to prevent those mistakes and just allow you to go out and have fun motor coaching. So we look forward to seeing you again on our next uh, video coming up, which will go over the insides of our motor coach and how we've set it up and what you need to purchase and what you don't need to purchase. Meanwhile, have a great day and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.